Hello and a warm welcome back to the channel of Motorbike Nonsense and a beautiful British spring day. The chickens are out, the bluebells are blooming. I've just seen some cows being moved, which is why I'm not filming in my normal location. But yeah, what a beautiful day to talk about death. Yes, I don't really want to depress you, but we're all getting older and we're all going to die. Some of us sooner rather than later, judging by the riding I've seen on your YouTube channels. But this has made me realize as we get older, we get less able to support the weight of big, big capacity adventure bikes like the 1300 GSs, the Triumph Tiger 1200, all the big ones, the expensive ones. And it's made me realize there's a real place in the market for the middleweight adventure bikes, such as the new Triumph Tiger 900. This is my full review. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you who it's for, who it's not for, what it's good at, what it's bad at, and whether you should have one if you don't like the idea of managing the massive weight and cost, let's be honest, of a full fat capacitive adventure bike, big capacitive adventure bike, the sort that's gonna leave you crushed in your garage, stuck underneath this GS, and you would be found months later by a housekeeper, just a skeleton rotting away underneath your Tour Attack panniers. It's a dark opening, this, isn't it? Anyway, let's go on with it. Ugh, I think someone's actually dumped a body down there. I should probably tell someone about that, but first things first, the Triumph Tiger 900 2024 costs from £12,195 for the entry-level GT model. Then you want to spend another £1,700 to get this GT Pro, which gets loads and loads more kit as standard, which we'll cover off in a minute. Then there's the Rally Pro with the 21-inch front wheel for more off-road adventures. And I have to say, this bike is still going to be about four or £5,000 less than the Triumph Tiger. 1200 it's also a little bit lower a bit more manageable weighs 222 kilos wet which is about 25 kilos less than the 1200 the seat height on this is between 820 and 840 mil off the ground which is about 32 inches thereabouts you can spend another 200 quid on a lower seat which is 800 mil that's heated as well so yeah i think the tiger 1200 seat heights are about 20 mil more on average and this is a very manageable bike i am six foot three so i'm tall and the seat is in the high position at the moment but look at that super relaxed getting my feet fully on the floor and the rider triangle is just super super comfortable really relaxed posture now one annoyance these pillion grab rails they're massive they're chunky but if you're a bit short and a bit inflexible like i am on a cold winter's day you do twat your knee on those if you're not careful and it really bloody hurts but anyway, let's talk about comfort in a different way now. The Tiger 900 is always going to be remembered as the Tiger that came for tea, or tea plain crank. Anyway, it was introduced in this bike when it first came out, and it brought with it an uneven firing order type thing that took away the characteristic smoothness of the Triumph Triple. Triumph said it did it for better off-road grip in between the firing pulses, but all it really did was annoy owners with more handlebar vibrations. Now for this generation, the 2024 model, they've mounted the handlebars on rubber, which has massively taken away the vibrations. It's also got rid of most of the vibrations through the pegs and the seat as well, even though Triumph says they haven't really changed those. Uh, the shape of the seat has changed. It's flatter, it's roomier, and it is far nicer, but back to the engine. Sorry, I'm getting distracted as usual. It's up 13 horsepower, so it's 108 horsepower now. Torque is up a little bit, uh, fuel efficiency is apparently up 10% as well. I've been getting 50 mpg out of it while hammering the bejesus out of it. So normal riding, you should get 60 realistically. Being the GT version, this is really the road biased version of the Tiger 900. So let's talk about touring because that's something I like doing on motorbikes. And if you're looking at this, maybe you do too. Uh, top box, that's 500 quid, including the carrier plate, which is fine, except the little leather backrest is 94 quid extra if you want your pillion to have a modicum of comfort. It's got a 20 litre fuel tank. It is chain drive, but the GT Pro does get the center stand as standard you don't get that on the gt version other differences as well things like illuminated switch gear you don't get that on the entry level gt only on the gt pro you do get cruise control and heated grips as standard on all of them uh, both seats are heated as standard on the gt pro but not on the gt oh and coming back to luggage that three box pannier set you can get is 1600 quid if you want all three boxes or about 1800 quid if you want the aluminium sort of Ewan and Charlie look. But yeah, you can properly spec this up as a big, comfortable tourer. But again, I have to emphasize this, get the GT Pro version because all the stuff you actually want comes as standard and you don't have to add it on through accessories. But anyway, let's talk about the electronics. 
The electronics have actually changed reasonably significantly from the old 2023 model to this 2024 one. Chief of which is the big seven inch TFT now has a proper rev counter set up like on the Triumph Tiger 1200. No longer the weird Picasso-esque mess of an interpretive rev counter that took ages to read like on the old one and on the street triples as well. But I don't really like how slow the animations are. It just looks a bit naff like when you're Look at that, oh, oh, I'm gonna move across. It needs a faster processor, Triumph. That's what it needs, because it just takes too long to get through the menus. Uh, riding modes, you've got your usual riding modes on this. You've got your sport. You can't do it with the ignition off. The car coming anyway. There we go, so you've got off-road, rider, rain, and yeah, sport and you can customize the rider mode. You don't get the customizable rider mode on the GT. That's another thing you don't get. You also don't get the up and down quick shifter blipper on the GT model, but you do as standard on the GT Pro. So another reason to get it. But yeah, don't really like that still. Don't like the graphics, too slow and fiddly. And I still don't really like the little directional cube thing here. There's too much button pressing to change rider modes. But otherwise, I like the fact it's got cruise and heated grips as standard. It's good. Let's go and ride it. All right, we come to the part of the video where we talk about how the Tiger 900 rides. And it's, uh, it's got pep in its step, that's for sure. It is just noticeably thrustier than the version that came before this. And I know that because I back to back them because I had the 2023 bike two weeks ago, I think now. And now I've got this and it has got 13 more horsepower. It's got a few more torque, but everything is just more accessible you don't have to go hunting through the rev range to find it and you didn't ever really need to anyway but anyway let's go up to motorway speed so we'll talk about refinement at 70 miles an hour because it's uh again improved the bars aren't as vibey the pegs aren't as vibey and the seats not as vibey and you're probably hearing a lot of wind noise and yeah a bit a little bit too tall for the screen i have that wind about every adventure bike this one's actually quite clean airflow though, because there's a big cutout in the screen down there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but I think that really helps clean up the airflow. So even with the standard screen on this, I could chunk out some pretty serious distances in, in comfort. And the riding position is just, I don't know, it's nice, just nice and relaxed. Got a little bend in my elbows. I could do really big days on this in complete comfort. And I would want to, because I've got my heated grips on, I've got my heated seat on, and you know, you can fit the luggage and everything else to it. It does just make me think, this is a really good touring bike. MPG, I've been getting about 50, as you can see there. But I would say I've been riding this harder on back roads more of the time than not. So I think if I sat on here at 70, for a couple of hours, that would probably go up to 55, 60 from experience. And try and said one of the big things about this new bike is they've improved the fuel economy. So yeah, 20 litre tank. I think I said it's about 230 miles of range. I'm getting 104, 130.9. That's very specific, isn't it? From probably that says seven eighths of a tank, but it's actually probably more like two thirds of a tank. So yeah, the switch gears are really easy to use. The indicators are easy to find. You do have the slight annoyance of that little joystick being a little bit close to the indicators for adjusting your riding modes and stuff like that on the go but it's it's not too bad and you can do a lot on the go on that screen i've whinged about the animations i'm not going to whinge about that anymore but look i just i can adjust the damping between sport and comfort as i come up to this roundabout and then crash into a traffic cone and things like that so that's much easier to do than it was on the old style dash let's nip this one off Oh, there we go. Right. It is a comfortable bike. It is a refined bike. But is it a fun bike? Now I'm going to get to some slightly twisty roads and we're going to jolly well find out before I go back and buy a sausage roll and undo all the hard work that I've done in the swimming pool this week. Right, just had a quick stop to change my camera angles. So hopefully you can see my builder's bum now. But yeah, I have just had a play with the, the damping settings. And it's only electrically adjustable on the rear shock on this, so you can switch it between sport and comfort. There is a difference when you go between the two extremes there, but it's not perhaps quite as pronounced as you might hope or think. It's not really a full electronic suspension setup. But the suspension on this, I have to say, is pretty well judged, and the handling is just really predictable. It's actually really enjoyable bike to hustle down a British B road like this. It soaks up bumps really well. It rides nicely. You've got a good view over everything. It steers nice and quickly. It's just really a quick cross country bike. It is, it's enjoyable. It's really nice. And 
I can't get this to come across on video, I'm sorry, but the noise from that T-Pain crank engine is, um, is addictive as well. And you'll find yourself using the revs more often than not, even though you don't need to, just because it's got such a nice guttural sound. Now, one of the areas where this bike has actually really noticeably improved from the previous version is on the brakes. The brakes, the calipers haven't changed, they're still Brembo Stylemas, but the bite has massively, massively improved compared to the 2023 model that I was running last week. I don't know if that's because this now has a linked braking system and then there's some uh, fudgery going on there, and that deactivates, by the way, when you're in the off-road mode on the off-road one of these. But the bite is just really where it should be. It's a uh, it really strong performance from the brakes. They're really impressive. And yeah, as I said, they're linked, so you get a bit of rear when you use the front. And... <laughs> but yeah, it's a really, really enjoyable bike to ride. And it's been one of those bikes that I've been hopping on more than I thought to go out and just have a either a bimble or a bit of a blast and i'm not really worried about all this crap on the roads whether it's wet it just looks after you the weather protection isn't going to be perhaps as good as on the bigger 1200 because there's less screen there's less body work to look to look after you but yeah this is an all day sporty touring bike i would say it's not an adventure bike I'm not going to take this one off road you're going to want the one with 21 inch front wheels although this could probably do a bit green laning if you wanted it to on a dry trail but yeah really really impressed the tiger 800 is a bike i always thought was a bit flat a bit pipe and slippers with that torque curve that just didn't go anywhere it was it was good for what it did but i think this is now sort of the perfect middleweight tiger recipe they've got rid of the horrible vibrations but they've kept the characterful t-plane engine they've uh, fixed most of the electronic foibles they've give you greater access to all the settings and things like that and you can kind of pick and mix your riding modes on this as well and uh yeah the the screen is my main niggle the mirrors are clear they're buzz free the handlebars aren't buzzy they're just very hot at the moment what's not to like to be honest if you're in the market for a middleweight adventure bike right now i would either pick between this or the ktm 890 adventure the 890 adventure feels angrier than this even though it's a parallel twin it's, uh, it's sportier than this. The handling is 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 just sharper. The turning is quicker. I think it probably feels a, a little bit less stable, and it feels more plasticky than this because KTM's do tend to fall into that camp. But I do really enjoy that bike. That's the one I would buy. But this is a very very good do-it-all bike that you can have many many great adventures on for years and years and years. Um, you know, it's not gonna be the last word in curing erectile dysfunction frankly but it's it's damn good anyway let's head back to me for a slightly more coherent outro have you been enjoying looking at my bum crack ooh, ooh, ooh. as with my turkish genital enhancement surgery lots of little changes have made a big difference to tiger 900 for 2024 it is more exciting the engine is gutsier it's stronger through the mid-range and i know that's what marketing people say on paper but you can really feel it when you take it out for a ride it's also more comfortable with fewer vibes the electronics and the dash are better but still not perfect it does need a faster processor because those animations just get on my nerves and it takes a bit too long to do anything but it's still a really good bike for solo touring solo adventuring i would pick this over the 1200 any day of the week it's more manageable and i think on a b road when you're properly going for it it's going to be as fast as the 1200 because you're limited by speed limits and vision and things like that you don't really need the extra 40 or so horsepower that the 1200 brings it's also just lighter it's nicer to live with it's easier to swing your leg over but still not perfect thanks to these things but yeah it's a really good bike and i'd really recommend you try a middleweight adventure bike you might look on paper and think oh 108 horsepower you get out of bed for less than 160 these days but you will be surprised you'll be impressed it'll be lighter it's just nicer to live with you get better mpg it'll be cheaper to buy cheaper to insure so don't overlook the triumph tiger 900 if i made myself clear good clear as mud hopefully anyway thank you ever so much for watching if you've made it this far you get to go and print out a little medal and stick it to your chest and say i watched a whole tim Rody video even though there's another bloody range rover coming through my shot other makes are available go by a lexus sorry thank you for watching like comment subscribe uh specifically go down to the comments and leave me the british word for 
I've removed the vibrations from my bum. And I liked it.